And so, we're heading into extreme danger! We have the Mars clergy defending the place, including three named characters. Eisenbach, extremely powerful with the Wundergast spell, which is basically Excalibur. I'm actually not really sure why this fan translation didn't change into Excalibur. Sylphus, who has a physics staff and some alright stats, but she can only heal. Han Marouge, the younger level 1 mage with a miracle charm, that doesn't bode well. Along with some just standard mages. Going up against them. Uh, well, um, uh, those stats. Wrath and warp. Yep, that is the Gaiden style warp, so he can go anywhere he wants on the map and still attack afterwards. And has a spell that can't be counterattacked. And he has 5 attack speed even with its 20 weight. And uh, he's also got this guy. Has a um, an area of effect spell. With only 4 might and it can only be used every 2 turns and nothing else. And also this, which is an interesting item. Yeah, there are actually a few ways to get around permadeath in this game. But this one's in the hands of an enemy. Also, um, he too has warp. And then he also has a bunch of uh, cultists. One of whom has a portrait and a title. And a whole lot of skills. Nile, Wrath, Adept, Paragon, Frontiersman, Magic Shield. That's... that's interesting. And yeah, there's no shops here, so there's really nothing else to do but to head to the Temple of Mars. Although, I should definitely... Yeah, you had the Physics Staff. I should definitely give that to Enter right now. And you can take that bow gun. Suppose I can give you that. Okay, I'll just give you that, because, um... Lancers on Martel don't really matter that much right now, though I'm not sure if I'll even be using her in this coming chapter anyway. I also just realised something, I forgot to have her talk to Sasha back in Chapter 4, and I'm really hoping that doesn't screw me out of getting Sasha's Pegasus Knight promotion, because that's actually the conversation where she mentions that she wants to be a Pegasus Knight, so uh, I'll, I'll show that in bonus footage, but I hope that still lets me get the Pegasus flute in the next chapter, but anyway. We're going to cover Chapter 5 now. Well, that's ominous. It's simply called The Other Side of the Legend in Japanese, so... Yeah, I'm not sure I agree with the chapter name this time, but uh, this is another song that will be used quite a lot later on in the game. Already there's quite a fray going on here. We've already got um, these guys kind of cornered by these Shadow Lancers who all have Devil Lancers. Which are very powerful, but uh, also very heavy, so yet more non-existent attack speed enemies. And that guy... oh, that's Eisenbach. Yeah, his map sprite doesn't really make him look like he, he does in the story. And we have Marouge over here. So, this is an indoors map, and that means that all mounted units are forced to dismount, and will not be able to use lances if they have them. Also, their stats here will be non-indicative. So, uh, except for Raffin. Raffin can use lances while dismounted, and if you somehow have Chrys or Arcus promoted now, then they'll be able to as well. So, I actually kind of want to show off Raquel here. I want Vega as well. Martel is not that great in this situation. I want to see if I can get a little bit more experience for Sasha, though. Uh, yeah, I mean, Naren's strong even while dismounted, but is there anyone here that I want to use? Honestly, not really. So, let's begin. So different people will deploy on different sides of this map. So 
So yeah, the four elements in this game are light, fire, wind, and thunder. Now that is kind of interesting because he's killed two of them already and he says that leaves only one more. What about the fourth sage? So yeah, this guy's backstory is basically a complete copy of Garnif's. It's almost identical to Garnif's. And the power to give generic villain speeches. And the last one is a critical for good measure. Yeah, that, that ding means a critical hit when it's on map animations. And so Eisenbaha is dead. It was pretty much inevitable. He was way too strong to be helping us. Thankfully though, this guy pulls the classic villain move of not staying around to kill us and instead leaving it to his much weaker minions. It's kind of a necessary trope though, because otherwise we just all die. Speaking of all dying though... Yeah... This map, if you're playing on an emulator, I would recommend making a save state at the start of the map. Because even though Marouge has a Miracle Charm, if you're unlucky, he actually can end up dying before you get to him, and there isn't a lot you can do about it since it's an indoor map and you can't really move that fast per turn. Yeah, thankfully he left before he realised Enter was here, because Enter was the one he was after all along. And she already makes one movement before the chapter even begins. So yeah, again, um, Sylphus is generally safe in this chapter, and also she prioritizes healing Marouge over the other clerics. But yeah, again, like it's it's really annoying, but it is definitely possible for Marouge to die uh, before you even get to him. But note that slightly darker Shadow Knights. You want Runin to go near him, for reasons, and there's also a couple of Shadow Mages here with Nosferatu, which is not actually Nosferatu in Japanese, it's like Janora or something, which I think just comes from Jar meaning snake. And uh, if you saw the intro video, you'll already see what its animation looks like, it summons a giant snake. Raffin has six move indoors even <laughs> while dismounted, that's kind of insane. That's not supposed to be how, um, you know, Bronze Paladin works. I was cycling through its uh, Japanese names for a second there, so yeah, that name um, that I mentioned before, Commando Knight, I don't even think that's entirely an accurate translation. I think it's actually more meant to be Command Knight. And the first fan translation referred to it as Knight Captain, which I actually think is actually a decent name for it, and I'd probably prefer that over, um, over, you know, Bronze Paladin this patch used, but I guess they wanted to keep the names of the Paladin classes consistent. Also, if you're unlucky, the uh, Mars Clerics will take care of all the enemies in this map for you and you won't get any experience. It's a very short map overall. Their AI is decently smart, but they can miss. So if you get unlucky, they might leave alive some enemies that Marouge, well, yeah. 
will suffer deadage from. Though in general, I uh, yeah, that's 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 kind of a problem. Fire is a little bit less accurate than wind. In general, I find that the enemies tend to prioritize them over Marouge, but again, we'll see. Yeah, so there's Nosferatu. But thanks to the magic stat acting as resistance, and only half of it at that, even mages take decent damage from magic in this game. Though, I still find it's this is not really a game where mages are that great, simply because they suffer from bad- Oh great, they're already attacking Marouge, that's not good. I do have Physic, and so does Sylphus, but um... Yeah, okay, yeah, you want to make sure these guys go for the Mars Clerics, which is very hard to guarantee. It's pretty much based on luck. Thankfully, there aren't a lot of chapters like this in the game. Okay, good. Runen can get over there. Uh, Marouge actually does need to talk to Enter, so sending Enter over here was probably a dumb idea. Probably should have had her go further forward, but oh well. I guess right now, I don't need to use Physic because um, Silphus will focus on doing that herself, but I'm just going to just because. As I was saying, that there actually aren't that many chapters in this game where you could potentially lose someone through no fault of your own. So, don't attack, do talk instead. He may have had a helmet, but still, the fact that he had a portrait and nobody else in the group did, pretty much implied something. We've heard about Barge, that's where Raffin is from. So we'll certainly accept anyone who wants to defect from the evil Dark Mage cults. And we'll be forever indebted to him too! Because here is Zeeg! Do you like Naren? Here, have another one! Zeeg is yet another crazily overpowered character Tearing Saga hands you early in the game. His base stats are already great and capable of soloing a lot of the game at this point, but he happens to also have absurd growth rates, easily the best in the game, and part of the reason why I had to use a maximum scale of 60 for the growth charts. And also he starts with Paragon, and Adept, and Wrath, and also Frontiersman, the best of the terrain skills. His class is Shadow Knight, which not only has access to both axes and lances, giving him easy 1-2 to two range options, but it also is the only class that can use Devil Spears without the risk of them backfiring. Oh, and he also learns Kanto, because they just love giving that to all of the people who are broken already. Zeke's only weakness is you might not want to use him too much. Because it's possible for his stats to get so high that enemies ignore him, no, seriously, this has actually happened to me before. So, yeah, Zeeg is kind of insane. Now I just want to... That guy's... No, nobody's going to be able to attack him, but... Uh, actually, okay, only a few things can still get to Marouge. I'm just wondering who I should take out first, just to, just to try and maximize his chances of surviving. Because this guy here is not in range of any N other NPCs, but these two are. They'll probably focus on killing the two Mars Clerics if I take this guy down with Zeke first. I have negative attack speed and I'm still doubling. Because, yeah, Tearing Saga early enemies. I like how the only thing that makes Zeke distinct from the other Shadow Lancers is that he's he has darker armor. 
But yeah, generally, and all, oh yeah, that elixir fully heals her. And it's called a healing drop in Japanese. That's useful to know because we need one for a later side quest, and some guides still say healing drop. And uh, the item that you see, um, the, the item that the boss has called an Azoth is actually called an elixir in uh, the original Japanese. So yeah, just be careful of that. That can uh, also, this guy can use Black Hole now because it's uh, uh, an even numbered turn, so watch out for that. The funny thing about Black Hole is it actually can team kill. Though I don't know if we'll actually see that in action here, but it is pretty funny when it happens. But yeah, Black Hole is an AoE attack. So we might want to watch out for that. Guess I can send Raquel up there. Yeah, five tiles in a cross with attack 17. Most of us have zero magic, so that's going to actually do quite a number on the majority of us. Actually, though, five tiles in the cross means, like, for example, if it hits Vega, it'll hit him there, 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 and there. So, yeah, it'll hit every tile directly adjacent to Vega, but it probably isn't going to hit Sasha if she goes there. So now, moment of truth. Will Marouge survive? He still has his Miracle Charm, so that's a good sign. Also that... I said, also that cultist is dead. There we go, good. So that other cultist might die too. No, he has full health. Oh, actually no, he gets one rounded by the fire, that's good. So as long as those who don't both decide to go for Marouge, which is probably unlikely, like, they tend to prioritize the Mars Clerics, like I said. Like, it's not super likely that Marouge dies before you get to him, but it can happen if you're not careful. So, just don't count out the possibility. Thankfully, like I said, this is a very short chapter, so you probably won't be set back very far if you do have to reset early. And I just want to stress, this is one of the only times that you can lose someone through no fault of your own in this game. If we play this right, we might be able to save one of the Mars Clerics. Because now... I can talk to Marouge with Enter. Thankfully, you can't miss this recruitment, since Enter is a forced deployment. And Marouge will automatically talk to her when he's in range of her. Just like that Vega situation in the last chapter. Well, I mean, that's, that's a good sentiment, but at the same time, you can't fight, so maybe don't. So we have Marouge now. I'm going to do something interesting, and I'm not going to give his bio immediately. Oh, she doesn't even, I don't even know if Silphus can die here. Story-wise, she's supposed to survive, so I don't I don't know what happens if she if she dies. She doesn't have a star on her name either. And what's this? Is this Route or is this defeat? Oh, it's Route. Okay, so yeah, we don't need to worry about that guy. Um, ending the chapter prematurely. So, what's interesting is that his score is actually not that high, probably, like, while he doesn't have Black Hole equipped. I think his score does go up while he has Black Hole equipped. You can probably check if you look earlier in the video, but... Let's show off what Raquel can do. If you need an enemy weakened, Raquel is your girl. But yeah, also because he doesn't have anything equipped, his attack speed is also way higher. Raquel is nearly guaranteed to bring an enemy down to 1 HP. And, okay, this is this is weird, but, um... With the way this guy looks, in my head, I always pictured him with a thick Scottish accent. And that's probably stereotypical and, and probably offensive, so I'm really sorry to anyone who's actually Scottish. But for some reason, for some reason, he just looked like he would have a heavy Scottish accent to me. I think that was actually, like, leaving him on exactly 1 HP anyway, without her, um, innate ability. Like, a lot of you will describe her as, like, having innate mercy, but there's no mercy skill in this game. Uh... I don't like having to use this S-Doc so much, but it is her best accuracy.
Or, you know, she doesn't do any damage to him, which is fine, because she still levels up anyway. I should have paid attention to the damage numbers more. That was actually a little dumb. Oh, I forget how much mastery you need for Leaven Swords, but I'm pretty sure Sasha's actually reached it by now. Yeah, that was that was really silly. I was like, oh, I, I go to do uh, yeah. Zero damage. Well, let's just uh, get the Reaper of Shram to do this. It's kind of funny because like with the name Reaper of Shram, you actually think like you'd think that that's referring to his um homeland or something, but no, it's actually his sword. I don't even know what the sword's named after. Okay, well, should uh, will this do it? There we go. And he revives with his um, with his Azoth, which is, I think, named after something from Alchemy. But yeah, again, in the Japanese version, it's just Elixir. And uh, he just leaves. So, like, it's not like you have to empty his health twice. That Azoth is just here so that he can he can survive the events of the chapter. And now we have two of these guys left. How heavy is your minus four attack speed? But at the same time, I don't think Raffin will do uh, enough to double you with the yeah, minus two. So I guess I'll just go for that. Oh, actually, Naren took quite a lot of damage. I should probably keep him away from enemies. This is kind of a nice song, though. And yeah, Marouge, I mean, I could use him to fight some of these things. Oh yeah, by the way, he, he's another character who had kind of a hilarious name in early fan translations, Maraju. Which isn't quite as funny as Eisenbaha, but it's sort of close. Like, I like Marouge, I think it's actually pretty good and probably what was intended. But I saw a lot of early guys that referred to him as Maraju. Yeah, one of them is probably going to try and finish off the Cleric, so unfortunately we didn't save any of them, but it's not like there's any bonus experience reward for saving them all or anything. I still love the bonus experience system in Path of Radiance. I wish that actually carried over to later Fire Emblem games. That was a great system. Oh, don't 1% crit me, please. And I think this is the first time we're seeing, like, actual magic in a battle screen. Every spell in this game has, like, a magic incantation associated with it, and I think none of the, like, they, they look like they're in Latin here, and I, off the top of my head, I don't know the translations, I probably should look them up, but, um, I think they were all in Japanese in the Japanese version, because I've seen screenshots of this game in Japanese, and it shows, you know, it shows them clearly in Japanese. Aha! I claim this throne in the name of the non-evil dark mages! Uh... Yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna finish you. Yeah, I suppose I should do that. Although, I mean, if he, if he hits me, then... He does actually two-hit kill Raffin. I just realised. Though I can probably just physic Raffin, because... Uh, actually, let's see something. Because these guys can be a little bit tricky to kill, since they, uh, since they heal with Nosferatu. And I would say brave weapons are like the only way to be, you know, absolutely sure of taking them down, but at the same time... Although, you know, what am I thinking, I should probably just whack this guy uh, with somebody. Can't really get Sasha into range. And then just take out the other guy with Raffin, and then, then Raffin is at no risk of dying because the map will just be over. I think I was overthinking things. So this is going to be a little bit annoying because I'm going to reduce you to 1 HP and then you're going to heal. This is where Ra uh, Raquel not being able to kill humans comes into play. Or, you won't heal because it'll miss. Some of the, especially the dark magic animations in this game are very long, so like, especially the screen fade out afterwards, and yeah, that's annoying. So yeah, if an enemy's already on 1 HP, then uh, all of Raquel's other attacks are guaranteed to miss. She's kind of like a reverse Aval from FE5. If you're not familiar with FE5, how um, Aval works in that game is that she, um, if an attack would kill her, it's rigged to miss. That's basically how um, 
how Raquel works in this game, but just she gives that effect to the enemies, basically. Okay, good. Level up for Pegasus Knight. Strength is good, though magic would be even better. Not that we have access to Levens yet. We will eventually. And that will certainly be the day where everything is... Okay, Runin can fight the guy too. Is, uh, yeah, Runin might be able to level up off of that, but... I want to save Enter's healing just in case I need to heal Raffin. Although at the same time, Silphus is probably going to heal us. I think NPCs can heal like player units in this game. And yeah, this is what dismounted bronze paladins look like. And yeah, that fully heals you. This is why I equipped the uh, Killer Lance, so I could potentially crit in the first attack and not have to deal with you healing, but that didn't happen. Probably because Esther isn't here. Okay, no crit on the second, but that does mean that Runin can finish it. So that shouldn't be too... If that's the case, though, I should probably heal him first. Just in case. I know I haven't used the save staff yet, I probably should. Let's just go... Okay, like, while this game takes a lot of inspiration from Gaiden, I am extremely glad that it didn't take inspiration from Gaiden's indoor maps and have every tile give a plus 20 evasion bonus. Oh, I hate that about Gaiden so much. It's just like... Uh, just makes the indoor maps so tedious in that game. Especially the map that's half indoor, half desert. It's kind of referenced in Heroes as well. Yeah, because in, in Gaiden, mages don't have um, free movement in Desert. And they also have four movement. I think they even have four move on promotion as well, or is it... Do they still get five? Yeah, Eisenbach did say that Gwen Chaos sensed him not enter. Gwen Chaos was wanting to kill all of the, the legendary sages. Yeah, this is yet more of the Garnef parallels, because if um, if Eisenbach is Goteau, then this guy is Merrick in more ways than one. I actually like this, because if you look at the spell's description in, during the chapter, it actually does say Eisenbach only. But now he's actually broken the seal on it, so... Now it's become Maruja's signature spell, and as you can tell, that's why I didn't give him his bio yet. Yeah, we don't know a lot about her either. Yeah, I get the feeling there's much more to the story than that. So, yep, yeah, more plot points they're being vague about until it's time for the big reveals.
Actually, I can mention something about this. So his class being Pontiff. This is another case where I don't entirely agree with the fan translation localizing this name, because um, his Japanese class name was so obviously evil it was hilarious. Uh, his Japanese class name is Diabolist. I just kind of miss that now. Well, he decided to teleport away before um, we got there, so that's more on him rather than us for evading death. Yeah, well, you should be lucky that you survive, because... Yeah, exactly, your survival is a blessing. If you get unlucky, he can actually die in this chapter. I can see his his whole, you know, issue of just everyone really only pays attention to him because he's the grandson of a legendary sage and the son of um, someone else very powerful. <laughs> yes, just straight up admitting it. Usually though, when somebody says, um, I think of you as a cute little brother, that's usually not what the other person wants to hear. Enter does have a bit of an interesting character arc early on though. introducing some, you know, potential flaws for her to have to overcome. Just showing how her actions affect the people around her. And yes, Marouge gains one, uh, Wundergust. It is actually pronounced with a V because I've read its katakana. So obviously this scene won't happen if you killed Roger. I actually don't know what happens if you kill Roger. Yeah, Mel used to be a cleric at the Temple of Mars. In fact, she was actually kind of a big deal over there. But we'll be finding out more about that in due time. So, Coda is once again, um, unleashing his patented take the family hostage tactic, which is the only way he can get people loyal to him. Yes, left their families under your supervision voluntarily. That's what they did.
The Great Bridge is gonna be our next destination. If you're taking men from the castle guard though, aren't they supposed to be more loyal to the princess? So while we're here, yeah, Maruj is in our party now, and he can use Vundagus now. So now I'm going to give his bio. Maruj is your first magic user if you didn't pick Lee back at Verge. Mages are interesting in Tearing Saga, I find. Firstly, there's not many of them. But they all do a lot of damage due to enemies, for the most part, lacking resistance. Even magic users take a lot of damage from rival mages. However, their stats are usually not great, and they also have 4 movements, going up to an average 5 on promotion. I personally find that Mage's typical Fire Emblem niche of taking out heavily armoured enemies doesn't work so well here because most of them have high HP, and often Levin Pegasus Knights do that job better. Generally, when I find a mage useful in Tearing Saga, it's for some kind of utility skill they have, or their personal tome. So what's Maruja's personal tome like? It's basically Excalibur, pretty strong and has a high crit rate. Some people really like Wundergast, but I personally find it's not that great unless it's getting crits, and that's kind of unreliable. I certainly like the personal tomes of mages we'll be seeing later a lot more. So Maruj usually gets consigned to kind of mediocrity when I play this game. Some people like him, I'm just not really one of them. I suppose his supports are alright, and he does have this weird thing of needing to be promoted at level 19 to get the most out of his skills, but he's probably not hitting level 39 for Flurry, even though Flurry would be pretty good. There's actually another mage who joins later who gets Flurry much earlier, so that's not a point in his favour. Although one thing he does have to his advantage is using Wind before promotion. There's a Wind tone we'll be getting later that is very, very good. It's also pretty lucky that he, uh, this Miracle Charm survived intact. He usually loses it in my playthroughs. So that one of the map actually went pretty well. I'm still gonna maybe put that in the convoy for now. I'm not really sure who I'll give that to. But yeah, we also have Zeke, and his stats are even more impressive now that he's not force dismounted. So, next time we'll be heading out to the Great Bridge of, not Murden, of Welts, which for some reason counts as a sea chapter. See you all then.